Is U.S.-China relations a very big topic of conversation right here in Aspen at the Ideas Festival? One company in the crosshairs, Huawei. Last year, the FCC banned the sale and importation of their devices over fears that Beijing could use them to spy on Americans. Joining us right now is Huawei U.S. Chief Security Officer Andy Purdy. Andy, it's great to see you uh, this morning. Uh, we're having lots of debates about chips and AI now on the table in terms of uh, what chips we're willing to export and allow China to have access to. I'm so curious if you could just even just walk through what's happened to your business over the past year. Well, it's Wednesday, it must be Wednesday, so there must be additional pressure to hurt our business around the world. Uh, what we have done, given the trade restrictions, primarily the restrictions on the ability to sell 5G uh, chips that are used in our phones, is we basically had to heavily invest in R&D. Uh, we're at over 25% of total revenue. So we've been adjusting our portfolios focused on carriers, enterprises, consumers, to, to build on those trends of, of digitalization, intelligence, and carbon neutrality. So we have we have stopped the drop in our consumer revenue. Uh, our carrier business has leveled, and our enterprise business, uh, supported by uh, 5G to business, uh, has grown 30% in, in 2022. So with our continuing focus on investment uh, and in partnering with customers around the world, uh, we're going to find success. For example, the global Fortune 500 uh, list of companies, we've partnered with 267 of the global Fortune 500 companies, and we've been hired by 700 right. cities through their digitalization efforts. Andy, I know you object uh, to the to the narrative and some of um, uh, the reports uh, that the U.S. government has put out about Huawei specifically. But I'm so curious about how you're thinking right now about the relationship between the United States and China, um, about the you know what we're seeing from uh, uh, Secretary of State Blinken, and, and how you think that this is man manifesting and metastasizing. Well, we're, we're just a small player when you look at the geopolitical issues between the U.S. and China. I'm heartened that uh, the Biden administration has changed their focus from decoupling to de-risking because this risk is what it should all be about. Janet Yellen has said there should not be a complete decoupling because it'd be fi financially catastrophic to the U.S. So the question of what to allow in sales and investment is a fundamental issue that I think needs to be decided based on what is in the best interest of the U.S. I'm hoping that saner minds can find areas of potential agreement so we can try to build on things like uh, reducing the carbon footprint, uh, digitalization, uh, helping uh, the, the ecosystems of the world. Help us with this. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, I'm sure you saw the report, uh, reporting that Huawei workers uh, were tracked uh, at a China uh, spy facility. Can you, can you tell me what you thought when you read that and what you know? Well, I saw a newspaper article that said that uh, there was speculation that there were some bad things going on, that Huawei was participated uh, in efforts to help the China government create signals intelligence capability based in Cuba to spy on the United States. Huawei categorically denies participating in such efforts on behalf of any government and categorically deny that we're doing any of that kind of activity in Cuba. Can, can you just square, though, the circle, which is we hear report after report after report uh, from, from U.S. intelligence officials uh, about um, China, but often Huawei specifically, around security and the like. And then we have conversations, Andy, on our broadcast, and you deny them. And, and, and I always say to myself, even if the world is not black and white, there's something in the gray, no? Well, if you keep repeating the same thing over and over, uh, then sometimes people listen. I've uh, ventured to 26 countries in the world, so I've had some private conversation with some U.S. allies. And the pressure to block Huawei for whatever reason has been intense. But when you look at the question of what is the record in terms of the facts, uh, and you don't even see very specific allegations regarding the national security threats, and look at the reality in the last couple of years, as you know, major cyber attacks right. demonstrate a fundamental principle. And that is that there's no such thing as a trusted supplier. So when the attacks on SolarWinds and Microsoft Exchange Server, the bad guys can hack into everybody. And when you look at issues right. like privacy, such right. as the TikTok example, you force a sale of TikTok, but the question is, who's going to protect American data? There need to be objective and transparent international standards, transparency, and third-party verification right. for everybody. Andy, we're, we're going to have to run, but as an American citizen, what do you think about just the relationship itself and the concerns about where, where Taiwan might be and what may it happen? 
Well, that, that's similar to one of the earlier points that um, the situation, the geopolitics between the U.S. and China, we're just a private company and we are not involved in those issues. And we hope that there can be a resolution of those issues that's, uh, that's peaceful.